Damon is a, has been a member of the Toronto Rock for a few years, and we're going to talk a little bit about a new program that he has running. So Damon, welcome. It's so wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much for having me, and um, I believe happy belated birthday to you too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was on Saturday. Thanks a lot. No you know, it was last year on March 13th when I was gonna fly home from Ottawa and the plan was to spend my birthday at a rock game because you were supposed to play on March 13th. And I've got season's bandits. tickets. Yeah, that's right, that's right, against the bandits. And my son and his wife, we got extra tickets for them and that was gonna be the birthday celebration. And then as we all know, last year on March 13th, everything shut down and uh, it just, you know, here we are a year later and we've had to adapt, right? Yeah, no, it's crazy to think that, you know, it, it has been a year, you know, it's been a year since we've all um, played lacrosse, you know, it, it's hard to, it's hard to process that, you know, that I haven't played the game that I love for, for a full year. Um, but obviously, you know, I, I felt, uh, I found other ways to kind of um, keep myself um, busy. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize like professional lacrosse players, um, I, I have so much respect for you. You play because you love the game so much. You're not in it for the money. All of you have another job of some sort um, and, you, and you really genuinely play the game and get out there and work hard, give up your weekends for you know, practices and games because you really love the game. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I think that's why it's such a, you know, a beautiful game too, right? Like no one, no one really does it for, for the money. Everyone's doing it, like you said, you know, for the, for the love of the sport and, you know, it truly comes out in, in games. You know, you see that um, when you're playing other teams that, you know, we're not, we're not in it for the money, you know, we're in it kind of just, we love doing it and we love um, playing the game. We love competing with our, um, with our teammates, you know, to ultimately win the final, um, win the final game. Well, it always drives me crazy when they talk about Toronto teams and how many championships they won, and they always forget about the Toronto Rock and the you know six six championships. I think we've won. Yep, six. Yeah, and since you know since we were founded back in '99, uh, no other Toronto team has won more championships, right? And so that's something that, again that's um, not necessarily known or you know talked about enough too. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, Damon, uh, this summer. Um, after what happened in the States with George Floyd, and we saw in Canada the um, real focus on Black Lives Matter, on um, injustice that has been perpetrated against Black Canadians for, for generations, um, and, and the systemic racism built into our society. And so often, I think in Canada, we've looked south of the border and said, but we're not as bad as they are down there. And the fact is, is that, yeah, actually, there's a lot of problems here in Canada. And I remember seeing a video that you did with Nick Rose and Latrell Harris. Um, can you maybe tell us a little bit about that video and and what the, what the story was behind it? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Nick, Latrell and I, we kind of came together and, you know, like you said, it was that, um, you know, the times were, you know, that the death of George Floyd, you know, and racism and everything, it was kind of an all time high, right? So we kind of came together to, to make this video to um, ultimately actually raise some money for, for a great charity, One Voice, One Team there. Um, but we came together and, you know, we thought that, um, you know, this, this idea that we had would be pretty, um, pretty powerful. You know, the idea was basically, you know, Luttrell and myself, um, and Nick, we all have white mothers um, and black fathers, right? But um, Nick, he's, you know, a little more um, light skinned, right? So you wouldn't actually be able to tell that um, he was black, right? So in our video, um, me and Latrell, we both go over, you know, things that we've um, had to go through in our lives, you know, because of the color of our skin. And, you know, Nick, where he hasn't, you know, experienced, um, half the things that we've experienced because of the color of our skin but you know he he's the same as us right he's he's half Jamaican he's, he's half white he's the exact same as us but because of the tone of his skin he doesn't get treated um you know the way that Latrell and I have been treated in the past so um you know we kind of came together and thought of this idea and you know it, it came out to be a very um 
very powerful video that, um, you know, I, I got a lot of um, people, you know, telling me, you know, how much, you know, they didn't even know, you know, that, you know, maybe I've gone through this before or, or Latrell has gone through this and, um, you know, it, because it you talked about being stopped by the police, um, things that we don't, we just don't think happen here in Canada and, and that you and, and Latrell had experienced in your lives, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, you know, that was, um, you know, that, that was back when I was um, a teenager and that was, um, that really opened my eyes too. And, you know, it, it happened. I was literally walking my dog on the street with my sister and, and you know, we literally got surrounded by like three different cop cars because, you know, I, I fit um, a description, right? And, you know, we kind of ask, you know, what's that description? And, you know, kind of got the short answer or whatever, but it, um, it does happen. It does happen here. Um, obviously, it's a little more, um, I'd say, direct um, in the United States, where is here we're a little more, you know, uh, I guess not direct with it, but um, it does it does happen. Uh, it happens here. It happens in the States. Um, yeah. I just want to make, you know, it, make people aware of it, right. It, it does happen. And it's not just in the United States. It'll, well, it's also here too. You raised money for um, a charity that was founded by Orlando Bowen. Um, and Orlando was a Toronto Argonaut player. Um, I'm not sure if he was playing for the Argos when this happened, but he was stopped by the police. He got a concussion in his football career was ended because of the brutality that he faced um, because he was a black man for no other reason. He hadn't committed any crime. He was stopped. He was, he was assaulted and it, it ended his career as a, as a professional football player for no other reason than he, he happened to be driving his car at night as a black man. Um, I think it was in Mississauga, if I'm not mistaken, but it was, um, and he's founded this charity that goes out to, to um, try and empower youth and, and um, it, it, it's a pretty, um, pretty powerful story what happened to him. But I will say we'll link the, the video in the description for this chat with you because I, I was, it, it really struck me when, when Rosie went, you know, I have a black father and a white mother and none of that happened to me because of the way I look. It, it's just really powerful. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. But out of this has has grown um, something positive, which is the Damon 45 school program, right? Um, so maybe maybe tell us a little bit about what you're doing with that. Yeah, so, um, you know, if there's anything that uh, good that came out of 2020, it was um, it was this project here, right? So, you know, I was able to obviously, um, we had a little more time on our hands, you know, with you know, all the lockdowns and everything. So you know, over like a six, um, seven month um, time time span, I, I created this program, Damon 45. And, you know, it, this program doesn't, ha doesn't happen without, you know, the help of um, other people in the Toronto Rock, um, our digital guys, social media, everything like that. And I was really um, thankful for their help uh, for this project here. And yeah, so, you know, Damon 45, it's basically, you know, it's built on um, three pillars, right? So that's understand, uh, educate, and unity, right? So, you know, I kind of wanted to um, give the youth, you know, an understanding of uh, these issues that are going on in our society today, um, kind of explain, you know, why they exist and, you know, ultimately understand that, you know, we can all, we can all do better, right? And, and number two, right, educate, right? So this program is created to, to further the use um, knowledge, you know, of the quality um, of these injustices, but also, um, you know, give them the tools to educate themselves, um, but also educate um, other people too. And, and unity, right? Number three, I, I just wanted to show, you know, how, how important and how powerful um, we can be when we, when we unify, right? No matter the color of, of our skin, right? And that's a, that's a message that I definitely um, drive home when, uh, when I'm doing these programs here. And, you know, I've had, um, so much fun with these programs. You know, I, I've been in almost, uh, I think over 30 schools now. And, you know, it's something that's um, very special to me. And, and, you know, the, you know, the feedback that I've gotten back from this, it, it's all been, um, it's all been pretty amazing and, and surreal for me. So what age group, um, like what, what um, ages are you targeting and when you go into the schools? 
So I'm targeting eight grades um, six to eight. So like the primary right now, um, you know, I've done grade fives here and there. But yeah, I really wanted to get that that primary um, age just because I, I feel like they can kind of absorb it um, the most and they can be kind of the most, you know, impactful too, right? They're heading off in the high school and everything like that. Um, but, you know, I, I definitely see um, this program expanding. Um, you know, I want to eventually be able to, you know, get to high schools and, you know, because I think, you know, everyone kind of needs the help, right? And, and, you know, high school needs it too, but you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm heavily involved in, in the community and, you know, kids are kind of my, my, my bread and butter. And, you know, I love coaching and everything like that. And I just thought that, you know, I'd start off with, um, with uh, this age, right. That the kind of the most impressionable um, start there and kind of go from there, right. Start small, eventually go big. So um, if you were saying that you're booked in March, but you still have availability in um, April, um, if, if people want you to come into the school. So, um, is there a cost for you to come into the, to talk to the kids? It is absolutely free. Yeah. So, um, we've worked it out with my, uh, with my team and everything that it's a completely free program, right? So obviously everything is, um, virtual right now. Um, eventually I'd love to get into schools and, you know, be able to, to teach this, teach this in person, but also play some lacrosse too, and actually teach the game. Um, but yeah, it's completely free and it's all um, all online, either through Zoom, Google Meet, whatever um, program the, the school board uh, uses, I can um, I can use too. Yeah, I noticed you've got your lacrosse st stick strategically placed there yeah, uh, behind yeah, you. So what got you playing lacrosse as a kid? Um, so actually, well, I started playing at the tender age of three. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I quite knew what I was doing back then, but uh, my older, my older cousins um, played lacrosse, right? It, so it kind of been in um, my family that way. And uh, my other cousin, who's were a month apart in age, we both st started playing together at the age of three, and you know, been playing uh, basically together ever since. So started uh, basically because our, our cousins, uh, my cousin played before. Wow. Well, you're. Um, I, I mean, the Toronto Rock have a reputation of being great community partners and really being involved in the community. So, um, but I, I really give you kudos for putting this program together and, you know, reaching out to kids and teaching them about black history and uh, injustice and uh, educating them on, you know, how, how, what has happened. We can't learn from the past if we don't know that past exists. Right. And um, I know I was quite involved over the summer and recently we started a study on systemic racism and policing um, because it's not just black Canadians, but indigenous peoples as well, especially when you get out West who are, who are targeted by, by the police. And, and uh, we have a long way to go as a, as a country, but, but the first step is having these conversations. So it's uh, I'm sure the kids are, are, they're probably really excited to have you come to the class and then you can, you can, um, you know, you can grab them because of the sport of lacrosse and at the same time teach them um, sort of sneak in that, that learning as you're talking to them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to, to have this platform, right. As, as a professional athlete uh, of a Toronto team. And, you know, I just really thought that this was kind of the, the perfect time to, to kind of bring this, uh, this program um, to light. And, you know, I, I, like I said before, I have, I've had so much um, fun doing it. And, you know, I, I do a little um, Q and A at the end of uh, each session, right? So, you know, if kids have questions about, you know, the program, questions about, you know, my history, cause I tell a lot about my story and, you know, what I've had to go through. And so, you know, I like doing a little Q and A at the end and, you know, it's, it's amazing to see some of the, um, the questions that some of the kids have. And it's just, it's, um, it's amazing to me. And, you know, I had this girl, this girl this past week, grade seven girl who literally had me had goosebumps all over my body. And it was, um, it was something that honestly was, it made everything, everything worth it um, through this program here. So um, it was something that was very um, special to me. Well, it's so often, 
often for young people, having those role models to look up to, Damon, right? And, and having people tell their story so they know they're not alone. Um, I think that's so critical it is, is to have those, those role models so that they can actually see themselves in you and say, okay, I'm not alone in what I've, what I've faced. Even, even grades six to eight, um, especially for, for young black girls and boys in that classroom who look at you and hear your story and they say, okay, maybe I'll be okay. There's somebody who, who's giving me the tools that I need. I'm not alone in what I'm going through. I think that's so important for young people, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think about when I you know I was um, that age, you know, I generally went to schools that were um, pretty white dominant. And, you know, I, I think about just having if I had someone maybe come in um, and speak to, you know, other students and speak to myself, that it would have been pretty um, uh, powerful for me, right. So, you know, I just hope that, you know, I can have uh, some kind of impact on, on some of these kids uh, lives. Well, Damon, thank you so much. Thank you for um, what you're doing with this program and, and the message that you're spreading. And thanks for being such an awesome player too. I always enjoy watching you on the floor. So um, go rock, go. I look forward to seeing a game, hopefully in December this year and uh, sitting in the stands and cheering you on. Absolutely. And we always, we always thank you for your support there, Pam. We love your, uh, we love your enthusiasm for the team for sure. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.